Welcome to this week's Archaeological Discoveries. My highlighted story is about the excavation of an early Neolithic lake settlement near Rome, where the remains of textiles, baskets and ropes have been found. Such artefacts are scant in the archaeological record because they don't normally survive. So along with some other objects at the site, they've given researchers some interesting insights into life on the Italian peninsula 8,000 years ago. I also discussed the discovery of 4,000 year old copper ingots in Oman, some intriguing Bronze Age rock carvings that have come to light in Sweden, the analysis of the oldest piece of decorated wood ever found in Britain, and the unfortunate destruction of 37 standing stones near Karnak in France. New paper details research at an early Neolithic lake settlement near Rome. In 1989, a submerged settlement dating back 8,000 years was discovered near Rome, leading to an extensive archaeological investigation over 20 years. A new paper published in the journal Antiquity details the results of these excavations with a particular focus on the textiles, basketry and cordage recovered from this early Neolithic site, now known as La Marmotta. Finds made of these materials are not frequent in the archaeological record from that time period due to the fact that they decompose easily. The majority of surviving artefacts from the Neolithic are made of stone and ceramic. However, such finds are really important because they teach us how Neolithic communities processed raw materials, worked with their environment and traded with other groups. The oldest examples of textiles, basketry and cordage found so far date back to the Paleolithic. Linen fibres have been found at the Zuzuana Cave in Georgia in occupation levels dating to between 32,000 and 19,000 years ago. Also dating to 19,000 years ago, woven fibres have been found at the Ohio II site in Israel. La Mar Mata is a submerged settlement in Lake Bracciano, which is around 30 kilometres from Rome. The settlement sits at a depth of 11 metres and is 300 metres from the modern shoreline. Around 25% of the settlement has been excavated so far. There are three phases represented there, which date to between 7,700 and 7,150 years ago. Some interesting unique artefacts from the site include canoe-shaped vessels, which have never been found anywhere else on the Italian peninsula. Archaeologists have discovered thousands of wooden piles and support posts on the lake bed, which suggests there were around 13 pile dwellings there, measuring 10 by 6 metres, each with internal walls and a central hearth. Five wooden canoes were found next to the dwellings, making these the only ones found so far in the Mediterranean, which date to the Neolithic. The settlement was abandoned suddenly with many possessions being left behind. A lot of the wooden artefacts and structural remains show signs of burning, something that has been found at other Neolithic settlements such as Alpine lake sites and the Bronze Age village of Must Farm in England. Since some of the raw materials came from hundreds of kilometres away, it appears that the Neolithic inhabitants of the site practised long distance trade. Flint was found which originated in southeastern Italy, and obsidian was found which came from the Aeolian Islands near Sicily. Some of the most impressive finds at La Marmata include these four small textile fragments which are currently being studied. Experts think they were made from plant fibres, probably flax. Many flax seeds have also been recovered from the site. 28 cord fragments were excavated as well as two lengths of thread. These were made by the twisting, braiding or knotting of short fibres and would have had a variety of different uses. 43 basket fragments were found, some of which still had food remains attached to them. Imprints of baskets were also embedded in pieces of bread. Eight spindles were discovered at La Marmotta, including a complete one. Spindle walls, loom weights and weaving tools were also found. These finds all point towards accomplished textile production and may even suggest craft specialisation. They show that this Neolithic community knew how to process plant fibres, traded over long distances and was adept at working with wood for the production of pile dwellings and canoes. Such evidence rarely comes to light from such a long time ago due to decay, so it provides further insight into the material culture of Neolithic communities on the Italian peninsula. Bronze Age copper ingots found in Oman. 
A team of archaeologists excavating the remains of ancient settlements near Ibra in Oman have discovered three individual copper ingots within one green lump, a find that they say is very rare. The lump of copper weighs 1.7 kilograms and was excavated from an early Bronze Age settlement that dates to between 2600 and 2000 BCE. During that time, Oman was a major copper resource for both the Mesopotamian and the Indus Valley civilizations. Each of the ingots has a plano-convex shape, which was a result of the molten copper being poured into clay crucibles. Further research will attempt to identify how combustible material was sourced for the smelting of copper, considering that the area is dry and has limited vegetation. Pottery sherds which belonged to large black slipped jars were also found at the settlement. Typical of the Indus Valley culture, these provide further evidence for interregional trade in the Bronze Age. Bronze Age rock carvings discovered in Sweden. The foundation for documentation of Bohuslan's rock carvings in Sweden recently discovered yet more petroglyphs under a thick layer of moss. Bohuslan is a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its extensive rock carvings, which have so far been found at roughly 1,500 sites. They include depictions of birds, livestock, whales, hunting scenes and rituals. The latest 40 carvings were found incised into a granite rock face near the town of Kavile. Each figure measures between 30 and 40 centimetres. They depict people, chariots, and boats. What's interesting about these latest finds is that they are on a rock face around three meters above ground level and would have been on a small island during the late Bronze Age. This suggests that the carvings were made from a boat. It's not known why the Bohuslan petroglyphs were made, but scholars think they may have been used to tell stories or to show ownership of something. Oldest piece of decorated wood found in Britain. Four years ago, during the construction of a workshop in Boxford, Berkshire, the landowner came across a large, well-preserved piece of decorated wood sitting in peat around 1.5 metres below ground level. The timber has now been radiocarbon dated by Historic England, the Nottingham Tree Ring Dating Laboratory and the Centre for Isotope Research at the University of Groningen, which has revealed the piece of wood to be more than 6,000 years old. This is 500 years earlier than the oldest piece of decorated wood that had been found in Britain up until this latest discovery. Measuring 0.42 metres wide and 0.2 metres thick, the wood was preserved due to the anaerobic conditions of the peat it was found in. It's not clear what the markings on it represent, but they are similar to that found on Neolithic pottery, and also the decoration seen on the 12,000-year-old Shigir idol from the Ural Mountains. The Shigir idol is actually the oldest piece of carved wood in the world. Historic England has posted a 3D model of the carved timber on Sketchfab. I've put a link in the description below. The timber is being conserved at Historic England's science facility in Portsmouth and will eventually go on display at the West Berkshire Museum as well as being temporarily exhibited at the Boxford Village Heritage Centre. Megaliths destroyed during construction works near Karnak. I'm sure you've seen this story in the news. 37 standing stones are reported to have been destroyed during the construction of a Mr. Bricolage DIY outlet in Montauban, France. Montauban sits close to Karnak, which is famous for its thousands of megalithic standing stones, tumuli and dolmens that are all protected as part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Mr. Bricolage outlet had received a building permit, which had apparently been issued after a survey of the site concluded anything there was of low archaeological value. A local amateur blogger, Christian Obelts, has detailed the destruction on his blog, which I've linked below. And this isn't the only site he's fighting for, by the way. So he says that the standing stones were part of an official list of local megaliths, had been featured on a map of the area since 2015, and were going to be submitted to UNESCO for consideration as a World Heritage Site. It's quite possible these particular men here were some of the oldest in the region, dating to more than 7,000 years ago, and clearly they made up part of one of the most interesting megalithic areas in the world. I'm not sure about all the details of this particular story. There are lots of articles, there are lots of threads on Twitter, but I am going to follow it closely and see what happens next. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Please hit the like button if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.